Hi guys, I'm Raval. Welcome to another Laravel tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how we can develop features as Laravel 5 packages. So this is just the first video in this short series and first of all we're going to be looking at the theory behind packages. So prerequisite. This video assumes you have worked with Laravel 5 before, you have a good understanding of the structure and have developed for Laravel 5 as well. So introduction. What is a package and why should we code like this? So what is a package? According to the Laravel docs for packages, packages are the primary way of adding functionality to Laravel. These packages may have roots, controllers, views, and configurations specifically intended to enhance a Laravel application. So packages can be large or small, and really good examples of a package could be a blog, a reporting feature, or an import feature. So what you guys need to take away from this definition is that you can build features as packages. And actually, it should be your primary way of thinking. If you're going to build a new feature for your website, you should think, can I put it as a package first? So why should we code like this? There's many reasons, and I'll always recommend coding features like this if you can. First is to keep our code modular. It is to be able to use our feature and other projects easily. This makes our code easier to maintain. It is able to manage our feature in a separate repo. So we can put our feature onto Packagist or GitHub, and we can then use Composer to manage our package. So when we code a new package, what it actually is, is a completely new ecosystem within Laravel. It's pretty much its own project within our project. So let's take an example. Let's say we are building uh, an import system for a website. So let's build our import as a package. We can have everything in there and um, it, it means it's modular and we can treat it as its own project. It can have its own composer.json. It can have its own dependencies, its own views, etc., etc. And then we can then take that and put it onto GitHub or Packagist so our main project can just pull it in using Composer. This means that our code does not, it's not coupled to a specific project. This means we can very easily lift our code and put it into multiple projects. And that is a very good advantage. So folder structure. As you know, Laravel is a very flexible framework. This can be a really good thing or a really bad thing depending on your preferences. So remember, we are trying to create code here that can be reused and pulled into other projects. And what we're doing is we're actually creating this little ecosystem as I refer to it. So if you think now you have Laravel, you're in your root. So you're going to create a new folder called packages. You will then create a new folder called uh, vendor name and then another one with the package name. So packages remains packages that stays in your root. Vendor name actually refers to, for me as an example, my vendor name will be Revolve Governor or Governor Revolve, but uh, you can also be a company name. So if you're working uh, for a certain company, it can be company A, and then package name will be the name of whatever you, your feature is. So let's take the example of blog. It'll be packages, Revolve Governor, blog. So that's the, how my folder structure would be in the beginning. Next, we'll be setting up our composer.json. So what you would do is navigate to your package folder from the terminal, but you will then run the command composer init. This will start a wizard for you to follow, and once this has completed, you will now have a composer.json file in your directory. The reason for our composer.json file is because we are treating this as a completely different project with its own dependencies. So just remember that. So what are our next steps? The next thing we'll be doing is creating a service provider so we can hook up our package to Laravel. Then we'll be creating our routes, controllers, and views, and then you can even include migrations if you wish. So that was just some theory behind packages and why we should be creating them. In the following videos in this series, what we'll be doing is going through an existing package, and I'll be talking through how you would develop one and I will try to go in as much detail as possible in the code so you can understand exactly how to create your very own Laravel package. 